One of the greatest things that you could ever do, we know is to give our life to Jesus, but one of the greatest things you could ever do is allow that light that you found to be so visible inside of you that other people can now find that light too. That means that your life and your lifestyle, the way that you live, the way that you love God can be so attractive that it could display who God is to people that do not know him. I wanna go ahead and we're gonna get into a word today. But before I start, I want us to pray. We're gonna pray and God's just gonna move. This is, this is history, guys. This is my first time speaking on a Sunday at the Hallmark campus. Y'all are making history with me, yeah. So excited to be here. The Way LA is online. Love you guys, shout out to The Way LA. Um, I miss you guys already. I'm glad to have you guys online and everybody that's watching online from um, California, the United States, all around the world. We love you. We thank you for being part of this community. Let's pray. Father, I pray that right now in the name of Jesus, that you would speak directly to every single person, God. God, I don't have things to say, but you have everything to say, God. And I just, I just really ask you, Father, that you would just help people where, meet them where they're at, God. May this message, God, make sense to them. May it give them wisdom and understanding. But ultimately, may it draw them closer to Jesus Christ. I pray, God, that you'll bless every single church in the area, God, that's having a service right now, God. Um, that you would bless the rock as they have service. Bless Abundant Living, all the victory outreaches, God. All the, the praise chapels, God. All the churches that are, that are having a service right now. We pray for fruit and harvest in their houses, God, and their churches. That today, God, people will get saved. Today, Lord, people will begin to be disciples, Lord. We're all on the same team, God. Loving people and bridging them to Jesus. So have your way today as I minister, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to talk about discipleship, if, you, if you're wondering what we're about. I mean, you could tell by just being here for a few minutes, we're, we're super crazy about making disciples, and it's because it's something that Jesus did. And as a Christian, one of the things that you do when you say, I'm going to commit to being a Christian, part of that is doing what Jesus did. So making disciples is a vital piece of that. You know, um, Pastor Marco kicked off this series, helping us really understand that the harvest is ripe. In other words, what he was helping us understand was, um, don't believe the lie that people don't want God. People desperately want God. Right now, people are, are depressed, they're lonely, there's a void in them, and they want God. And so Pastor gave us a great word on that and encouraged us to go out and work that harvest, which means preach the gospel and invite people to the church. Um, Christian did a great sermon last week, really helping us focus in on one mission. Someone say one mission. One mission. And today, what I want to talk to you about is, the inf is, is how to inf increase your discipleship influence. Someone say influence. So I want to help you increase your influence, but not on TikTok, not on Instagram. Not on I want to help you increase your influence in making disciples, the greatest work you could ever be a part of in your whole life is making disciples. I want to just start off with a small intro, but truth number one, I want to give you some truth. Someone say truth. How many of you guys like truth, right? I'm going to give you some truth right now, okay? Truth number one, God wants you to increase your discipleship influence. Matthew 28, 18 through 19, it says, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So this isn't something that a church just wants you to do. I need you to really understand the weight of this. This is something that God desires for you to do. He desires that your influence as a disciple maker begins to increase. Truth number two. Someone say number two. People around you need you to increase your discipleship influence. 
people around you. Matthew 5, 16, it says, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Let your light shine. Where do you even, maybe you feel like, I don't, I'm not in a place of light. I'm in a dark place. When you give your life to Jesus, you begin to light up. You're no longer the dark person you were before. Why? Because a light has entered inside of you, and that light is Jesus. Truth number three, your city and community can be one for Jesus if you chose to increase your discipleship influence. Acts 1.8. But you will receive power, someone say power, when you, the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. To the IE. Someone say IE. IE. I'm in LA, but I'm, a, I'm considered an IE baby. I'm just saying. LA, I love you. My heart is in LA, but my roots are in the IE. Your city, wherever it is, your county, your region, if you're watching online from out of the country, out of the state, your city could be one for Jesus if you increased your discipleship influence. I'm going to break that down more for you. But what is a disciple? And if you've been following the series, you may have heard the definition and maybe the Greek word, um, mathetes. The biblical definition of, uh, of a disciple encompasses not only a student or learner, but also someone who actively follows. Someone say actively. That means you don't stop. It's a continue. It's always continuing, okay? Imitates and lives out the teachings and the way of life of their teacher, embodying a full commitment to their master's guidance. Now, you may have heard the word discipleship. You, you, under, you know right now what a disciple is now, but you may have heard the word discipleship. Discipleship is a transformative and ongoing process of learning. It's ongoing, okay? Never stops. Following and becoming more like the master or teacher, following the teachings and examples of Jesus Christ. Discipleship is a commitment to a lifelong journey of spiritual growth, obedience, and imitation of the ways of the one being followed, which is Jesus. What is influence? Because I'm talking about, I want you to grow and increase your influence as disciples that make disciples. That word influence is the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, or behavior of someone or something. Now, let's put it all together, okay? What is it going to look like, and what does it mean to increase your discipleship as a, as, a, as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Increasing discipleship influence would mean expanding your impact in guiding others toward a deeper relationship with God. Someone say more. No, 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 no. Come on. Let me get like three exclamation marks on that. Someone say more. Woo, yeah. man, you guys sound better than the Super Bowl. One more time. More. Oh, man, yeah, see, I'm in the room with some holy warriors. I feel it. All right. It's not less. More, not less. Okay? It's guiding others in a deeper relationship with God and a more committed following of Jesus Christ. It involves not only a personal growth, which means you grow, but also actively and intentionally helping other people grow in their faith. See, this walk isn't about me just growing. It's about me growing. That is vital. That is important. But it's also about me helping other people grow. So I want to cover the five C's. Someone say five C's. I want to cover the five C's. And these are the five C's that, that will help you increase your discipleship influence, okay? Number one, commitment. Someone say Commitment. See, someone, some of us might not like that word commitment. Commitment. What are you going to commit to? A, commit to living for God. Spending daily time and learning and applying God's word in your life. I'm telling you right now, 
And this isn't a pitch, this is just facts. If you don't have the daily growth book, devotional, I'm telling you, you need to get this book. I, I, I know pastors shared it briefly and they're watching online right now, but we have a couple, Abriana and I, that we're discipling and um, he, he's a coach, uh, MMA coach. And, but one of the things that I loved is when I went to do a Bible study with them, I had something to leave with them, which was the book. And they were so grateful and they just said, we're so thankful for this, you don't realize how much of a gift you have just given us. And, and I'm just letting you know, these are people that, that aren't in the church and they're, and they're coming across what we're doing and what, what the Lord's putting in our hands. Let's not miss it, okay? It's vital to your growth. It's gonna help you accelerate in your growth with God. So you're committing to living for God. You're committing to building a personal relationship with him, right? Burn, and this is the thing, if you're gonna commit to Jesus, Whatever were the things that were holding you back, whatever the things that, that were stopping you and preventing you for living for God, what you want to do, if you're truly committed, this, and you already know, raise your hand if you've already committed to the Lord. Raise your hand. You already, you already know this. If you commit to the Lord, you burnt, burned the boats. There ain't no going back. You, you came to the island, you came into this relationship with God, and you said, whatever is not of God that was all of my past, the depression, the suicide, the, the, the bad group that I was hanging around, the gang, whatever it was, the drugs, I'm burning those boats. Why? Because I ain't going back to the person I used to be. I'm no longer going to be that man. You're no longer going to be that woman. And if you don't, I'm telling you right now, this is going to help somebody. If you have the boat still hanging out at the shore, you're gonna be tempted to get back in that boat. Get the temptation out of your life, which means this, make up your mind and just say, it doesn't matter what I've gone through, it doesn't matter what my struggles are, I'm gonna let God figure all that out, but I know my responsibility, your responsibility is just to make your first step, which is I commit. I'm committed. You don't want to do nothing with someone that's not committed, right? Would you marry someone that wasn't committed to you? You wouldn't. Like, if they were just, like, out to doing the vows, and they're like, I just want to let you know, this is a great ceremony, but just to be honest, I'm not committed. Some of you guys are buck wild. You'll be like, it's okay. Don't worry. We'll work on that, babe. Come on. <laughs> Some of you guys will be like, just, you think it's from the Lord or something. I don't know. But I'm just saying. You wouldn't do that in marriage. Who created marriage? God. God don't play that either. God's not playing one foot in, one foot out. He wants the commitment. Someone say commit. So you're committing. First, we're talking about committing to living for God. That's the sub point there. And the second sub point is committing to being a disciple. Committing to being mentored, to being coached, to being part of a church. Commit to being a disciple. Commitment is being planted. Commitment is being planted, okay? This is what, and I want you to understand, this is what you're not committing to. You're not, you're not committing and determining, am I, am I gonna commit or not, based off of, is this church like, tell me what I want to hear? Does this church, um, um, is, everyone, is everyone like really nice to me? Did, I, did that person acknowledge me today? Did I have all these friends? That, I just want you to understand, when you're gonna commit, okay, you're committed to this church so you could grow. Someone say grow. grow. All the other stuff is great. You're going to have fellows. You're going to have friends. We love you. I mean, this is, if you've been here just for 10 seconds, you could tell how loving this church is. And I'm grateful to be even part of it. Right? It must be one of the most loving places. It's better than Disneyland for sure. This is the most loving place on earth right here, man. But I just want you to understand, coming and being in these seats is not about you just sitting down saying, love me, guys. Come on, love me. Ugh. I feel so just drained from the week. And I just want you guys to pour it down on me today. Let's get it. We'll do that, right? But our, our responsibility is to show you how to do that on a daily basis with God, who does it better than any of us. Okay? 
You won't get there, though, until you commit to being a disciple. So maybe some of us in here were frustrated because we're not seeing that in our daily life. But the first step to ask yourself is, have you started committing to being even taught how to get there? This walk of faith, you're going to have to be taught. You're not going to just figure it out. And maybe you're very gifted at your skill set, at your career, and you're just so used to figuring things out. I'm telling you, this is not something you're going to just be able to figure out on your own. You're going to need a coach. You're going to need mentorship. Stop leaving an exit option. You know what that is? That's like someone saying, I'm here at the way unless God transitions me. That's the exit. I'm here unless, you know, I'll be here, but, you know, if God transitions me, then I'm, I'm out. You know how many people have probably transitioned themselves out and God said, I didn't have nothing to do with that. What I'm saying is this, if you're committed, you're planted, right? Stop uprooting yourself and saying, I'm going to go in, in, in my family and we're going to get better fruit over here and we're going to plant right here. Man, you could go, and we have some amazing churches in the IE. We have ch- great churches all over the world. I'm not, I'm not the one that's going to knock a church. I love the church. I love the body of Christ, and I love what God has done in my life through the churches all around the world. But I want you to understand, if you don't change, no, it don't matter what church you go to, there, you will still find the problem in the church, and this is the thing, and you still won't grow. You're not here to just find out, okay, let me just, I'm just testing this out. No, I don't want to make a commitment. You're fooling yourself. You're fooling yourself. What am I saying? Commit. These men up here, and I just love how the Holy Spirit just led Pastor Marco to lead and start Holy Warriors 4 with the men. You know how many women are probably like, wait, I can't, like, can I get in this? Like, It's just the men right now. We need to handle business. But I just love it because this is what we're, man, I I mean, I I just, now that I have two sons, I'm so about like, I'm like a family guy, like to the max. Like, but I just love it because I don't see just these men. Like I see their kids. I see their grandkids. I see this. I see a generational blessing of commitment to God and commitment to disciple making. That's what I see when I see all these men up here. And, and, and this is the thing. When a man is committed to his wife, that, wife, that marriage will have some great fruit. And, and this is the thing. Commitment. It's hard because a lot of times when you're asked to commit, what do you usually do? You look back to your history of what you've committed to in the past. And you see how it worked out or how it didn't work out. So if you, maybe your marriage didn't work and maybe you're, you're single now or, and, and you, you could get... You could get the man of God that's like walking in the anointing that you've never seen in your life. But if you are not moving past and getting healed and delivered from your past, you will ruin that marriage as well. Matter of fact, you probably would be too scared to even get into it. Because you, when you hear the word commitment, you run. This is just going to help you guys. If you run from commitment, all it is is a sign. It's not something, I'm not trying to dog your character, but I'm, it's just a sign that you still need some healing. And you're a part of a church, we operate in inner healing and deliverance. We want to, we don't want to, I'm not going to just talk to you at the altar for a second and then you get healed. Like, no, I want to have a conversation. It might take three to six hours just to help un- get everything out that you're going through so that you can not only have a successful life with God, but also a successful life in your next relationship or where you're headed. This is the truth, okay? And I'm talking about we're coming to church, but when it comes to commitment, it's not about just like who, ah, I didn't meet no one. I've been here for like three months, and I just don't have any friends. And I am for sure 100% a man of relationships. Like, I have great relationships, okay? But I didn't commit and come to the church to commit and just say, I just want, I'm just looking for a community to be, a, to be part of. And my whole me being part of the church revolves around that. God didn't pull me out of the trenches that I came from. God didn't set me free from drugs. God didn't heal me. God didn't bring me from where I was to where I am now so that I could just make it and revolve it around people. 
God saved me, set me free, brought me out of the real trenches right here in San Bernardino. He raised me up. Why? For purpose. He raised me up so I could spread a fire, a fire of the gospel, letting people know that Jesus Christ, he still heals today. He still delivers today. But most of all, he still saves souls today. It was going to be hard for you to commit to a church if, if you're not focused on the right things. Get your head in the right place, and I'm telling you, you'll grow so fast. Some of you guys have been in church for too long, and, and like 10 years, 15 years, and you're barely seeing growth that's uh, infant level, and it's because what's holding you back is your own commitments. Stop being scared. I'm, I know it could be scary at times. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what the wounds are, but I'm letting you know our God is a, a father that you can trust. You could trust him. And the, the C, commit. So A, commit to God. B, commit to this, um, being discipled. C, commit to making disciples of Jesus. Mentoring others for Jesus. Now, I want to show some photos real quick. Don't start judging me either. But I just want to show some photos. If you could show the first one. Okay, so look, this is me before Jesus and before I had hair. So um, this is... <laughs> And I want you guys just to see really quick because this doesn't happen unless there's a commitment first, okay? This, this, is, this is, I mean, you know what's crazy about that top right photo? That, I'm at a party at a house in San Bernardino, and that house is, you know who Ray Blum is <laughs> from Cityway? That's, I'm at Ray Blum's house right now. I don't even know him. I don't even know, I don't even know what I was, I was there for trouble, but, but. I, I went to that party, and then next thing you know, I see him. I'm like, I, he told me where he lived. I'm like, bro, I'm pretty sure I went to a party before at your house. He's like, uh, that makes sense. Uh, I, I did a lot of partying, blah, blah, blah. It was for his son or something, but that's that. These are my, these are my old, old people that I used to be with out here in San Bernardino, and that's me right there on the very top being, being ridiculous. And, and um, that's my apartment up top left when I told you guys, I, I don't know, some of you might know, but I lived in Las Vegas at 18 years old, got addicted to cocaine out there, lived a very violent, bad life. That was my apartment. I don't know what, I thought I was decorating, I don't know, I graffiti the whole wall. Um, that's me getting a tattoo when I was 18 years old. I got my tattoos all in Las Vegas at 18. Me smoking, drink, that was my actual fridge there. Um, Amsterdam vodka, beer, all kinds of junk there. This is Letting you know, I, and because this is the last thing I want. When I'm preaching to you, the last thing I want is for you to get fooled with this blazer. Or, or the last thing I want is for you to not realize that I was sitting right next to you. I, the last thing, I, I don't want you to miss this. I was sitting next to you. I could be your son that hasn't come to Jesus yet. I could be your grandson that's horrible, maybe on, on drugs right now. I just want you to understand. I could be the husband that you have that you're praying that gets restored. And the reason why I'm saying that is this. I'm just trying to give you some hope that whatever the situation is that you have going on, yeah, it could turn around. It doesn't matter what it looks like right now. It doesn't matter where you're headed. It could 100% turn around if you would believe. Let's go to the next slide. There I am. Yeah. Glory days right there. Woo. Okay. This is uh, Pastor Robert Vega, who leads our, our, our um, he, helps, he helped me a lot with like um, overcoming alcohol, all that stuff. Um, this is me getting baptized right here at the Sierra Way campus. February 22nd, 2012, I gave my life to Jesus. Shortly after that, I got baptized. Okay. Why? Because that's what Jesus does. He, got, he even got baptized, but also he instructs us to get baptized. If you haven't gotten baptized, here's a plug. Please get baptized, at least, at least this month. But this is me getting, getting, man, I was just so happy because I'm, mind you, this is real for me. This isn't, no, I didn't have in my mind career path. I want to be a pastor. You don't think about that type of stuff. Like, you know, not, like, this is him. He saved me. I'm just so grateful to this day. It's been over 12 years. I'm just so grateful. This is May 2012. Kind of like what you guys chose to do today, all the men. Pastor Marco and some of our men's ministry, uh, back then uh, Pastor Fernando and a bunch of pastors, they said, we're going to do a, a, a teaching just for men called Courageous. 
And, I, and, and this is April, I'm, February I got saved, and then I got baptized, and I'm like, well, I'm doing everything. I'm committed. I'm doing everything. Whatever you got, get, please give me it, because I'm crazy. I don't want to go back to hang out with the homies. I don't want to go back to doing all the drug dealing and all the stuff that I was doing. I need something right away, so please help me. This class right here, man, that, and this is the thing. I never really felt like I graduated, but that was, um, that's a whole other story. I probably shouldn't have graduated. I did some threats and did some bad things that I ended up graduating, but that's a whole other story. But this right here made me feel like I finally accomplished something. This helped me to just feel like, man, I'm doing something like as a man, like, okay, I'm like 19 years old, but I just felt more like a man. And then, and then they're like, you have to dress up nice. Look what I got baptized in. It's like, I was like, you want me to pull up in the tank top? I will. Like, but they said, no, you got to dress nice. So it helped me so much to what? Not only, not only come to Jesus, but transform into a man. It helped me to transform into a man of God, right? So that's just a little bit of, I just want you to understand, when you commit, it's real, that the transformation can happen, okay? I, I didn't get just instantly uh, jump into a pastoral role, and I'm going to show some of those pictures later, but I want you to understand that this is real and it's for you. I'm going to try my best to finish if not, come to 11 again for part two. <laughs> Number two, communication. Number two, these are the, the five um, um, C's, okay? Number one is commitment. Number two is communication. Your communication is going to sw have to switch up if you want to start influencing people for Jesus. Preach the truth, live louder, and let your actions echo his words. Romans 10, 14 through 15. When I got saved... I had a Bible study of like 40 young adults every single Thursday, and I wasn't a leader in the church. I wasn't nothing like known to anybody like that. I didn't know Pastor Marco, um, and I just started having a Bible study. I just knew God wanted me to do it. I didn't really know the word, though, but this scripture right here, I promise you, and, and some of you guys are here, Josh, our youth pastor um, that's here now, Brian, he was in there with me, um, a bunch of guys, uh, Maurice Woods, um, all kinds of people, and what was crazy was a lot, for a long time, I read this verse, and I'm talking about for like weeks. I just read the scripture over and over. I didn't know what to do. So that's all I did. Romans 10, 14 through 15, one of my favorite scriptures. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? We're talking about communication. We're talking about that you're going to have to, if you want to increase your discipleship influence at your job, in the grocery store, wherever you're at, you're going to have to ask the Holy Spirit to give you his boldness that he gave Peter, who previously was denying Jesus and was not walking in boldness, but then got filled with the Holy Spirit and started preaching with boldness. That could happen to you today. But if, I'm telling you, if you want to increase and reach the people around you, you need to start opening up your mouth and teaching the word and preaching the word. Communication. For I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ, Romans 1.16. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you, do, are you confident in, in the word of God? Do you believe that Jesus is what he says he is, which is the way, the truth, and the life? Because this is the thing. If you're scared or you feel a little ashamed of, of Jesus, you're not going to be able to communicate for Jesus. A lot of times we don't even want someone to question us or ask us about our faith. Why? Because we're scared that they're going to ask us something that we don't know. Can I just get a, who's been there at some point in their life? Just to be honest, I've been there too. Okay? That, that's real, right? But we just can't stay there. Okay? I remember walking baseline and I used to, man, Baseline, I used to walk baseline as a teenager. I'll just get out. I used to go to continuation school down there um, and Sierra Continuation School. And I used to just leave class out of nowhere. Just, I wouldn't tell a teacher. I'd just get out. I just didn't feel like being there. And so I would go to, to I, I would do some ecstasy, and I will just walk for like two, three hours, get into trouble. And I would walk baseline from like Waterman all the way to like H. And I'll just walk back and forth. I'll tag. I'll get into problems, whatever it was. But... 
what, what was cool, when I gave my life to Jesus, I was able to walk there again, but new. I was able to walk there and preach the gospel to people. I was able to walk there and connect with people. I would have some people, they'll, call, they'll drive by, and then I had some friends, and they, they drove by, and they called me by my old name. And, they, and, I, and I look back, my old nickname, and, and they look back, and I look back at them, and they're like, bro, what are you doing? I'm praying for someone right there on baseline. They're like, bro, hey, so-and-so. Hey, you know, in the, in the street, they'd be like, hey, food, like stuff like that. So they're like, hey, food, hey, so-and-so, what are you doing? And, 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 and I'm like, hey, I'm praying for this guy. Bro, hey, come over here. God's, bro, God is so tight, bro, I'm telling you. And I'm just telling him about Jesus. And what happened was I was unashamed. I didn't care what they thought. Some of you care too much about what people think. Some of you need to just get off Facebook and Instagram for a season because you revolve what you're going to do and what you're going to say too much on people's opinions. You know when your light is really going to shine? When you stop caring what people think about your light. Number three, coaching. Someone say, coach me. So number three is coaching. That means it's time to be coached. I love being coached. This should be normal, right? I feel like, like disciple making and like this needs to be normal and, and all throughout all our churches everywhere. I mean, this has to be like the norm. Does that make sense? Like you come to Jesus, you get saved in the church, you get baptized, and it's like normal that you're just a disciple that makes disciples. 2 Timothy 3.16, it says, all scripture is inspired by God. And it's useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong, and it teaches us to do what is right. The Word of God is going to help you understand how off you are. How many of you guys felt like at some point in your life, like, man, I just feel off. I just don't know exactly what it is. But there is something that's just not right. How many of you guys? Only this side? Okay. Thank you, guys. Anybody over here? <laughs> right? And you can't pinpoint it. Sometimes you think it's a, it has to do with a person, like it's that person, right? The Word of God will teach you actually what is wrong with you. Because there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with all of us. <laughs> That's why you need the Word of God. So the Word of God can help you see what's wrong. Because I know some of us, we get frustrated because we're like, I love you, God. I love God, but I just don't know how to change. I don't know what's wrong with me. You don't have enough Word in you yet. And that's why you need coaching. That's why you need mentorship. Why? So we can show you what the word says about your situation. So we can show you how to live as a, as a Christ follower now. Because maybe all you know is how to live a lifestyle of perversion. All you know is how to live a lifestyle of gangs, of, of negativity. All you know is how to run a business, and that's all. All you know is how to be abusive. But in coaching, in mentoring, in disciple-making, that's where we get to have, have fun and say, look, I know that's what you were, but today we're going to help you get to a place that you've never been to. We're going to begin to make history. We're going to change up your legacy. We're going to begin to do something new inside of you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Coaching. Let's show some photos really quick. These are some people I've coached. These are uh, me ministering. These are some old photos. The very top row, this is, let me get out of your way. Um, right when I got saved, one of my first responsibilities, okay, I had a whole apartment complex on Genevieve, um, north of San Bernardino by the Sierra Way campus. That complex was my responsibility. Eventually, I had two complexes that were my responsibility, which means this. Two times a week, I would go and I would take care of the whole complex. I would knock on every door. I would pray with them. I would do, some of them started letting me inside their house. They'll let me eat with them. They'll let me do a Bible study with them. If they needed pampers, whatever it was, okay? And, and, and I, like, I just want you to understand, I'm you in this. I'm not Pastor Gabriel. Look at Pastor Gabriel going to that with the power of Jesus. Like, I'm not that, okay? I just want you to understand. This is just me being a new believer committed to not only Jesus, but to being discipled for Jesus and being committed to making disciples for Jesus and saying, I will communicate. I will preach the gospel. I will allow myself to be coached because myself, for me, it was a lot of pride. There's so much pride, and if you're struggling with pride, 
It's going to try to prevent you from being mentored, especially if you have some dad problems and, and some authority problems. Those things will start to come up. And you know when they come up, just say, God, I don't want this anymore. I have some, some things going on, and you know where it's from, God, but please heal me. I don't want this anymore. I know, God, that you're the one who invented disciple making, not a man. So I know I, I, this is something you want me to do, God. So heal me, God, because I'm ready to step into my purpose. I'm tired of living an empty life. So this is me at a park. We did an outreach there. I don't know what the, the, the tank top was my favorite thing, I guess, at that time. Um, then the next one over there, that's me and Shorty Mac. Shorty Mac was a homeless guy on Baseline, very known. If, you, if anyone ever known or been around Baseline like the last decade or so, I'm sure you know who Shorty Mac is. He used to hang out by the tire shop right there. Um, but um, we would minister to him all the time. Um, he loved us. We, man, he used to sing worship with us and everything. Um, this is me doing another outreach here. This is adopt a block us taking groceries to people. Um, this is me. Um, later on, I became a middle school pastor. That was my first um, um, pastoral role here at the church. This cute little kid right here that asked me for prayer, and he's just, man, so, like, he's just really believing God for something. I just love that photo. And then this is a, a team of people that we would go out to baseline and hit the streets with. This is right here in Compton, a house in Compton, people are ministering to and connecting and mentoring there. This is baptism here um, at the beach, Venice Beach. We just did a big baptism, Compton, Bible study in a house in Compton, all of these things. And I want you to understand all of these things. These are people that I, I was able to impact because, let's rewind, because I, I, want, I want us to get this, because of my commitment. My commitment, because of my boldness to say, okay, I'm going to communicate. I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to go and do a Bible study with these guys. I'm going to go out there and preach the gospel to them, Amen. right? And I'm going to be coached. Number four, someone say number four. four. Community. These are the, the five C's. Build connections through shared victories, okay? Build connections with people. Help them get some victory in their life, and you'll begin to see the strong bond, the strong community that you'll develop with them. Build relationships with your mentees. Get in the trenches. Someone say trenches. Get in the trenches with them. Build community, okay? This is a, this is a good point I want you guys to understand. Strong communities are not based on friendship and hanging out, okay? That's something that's fun, but that's a surface level. Strong communities are built by strong battles that have been won side by side and fulfilling purpose together. That's where you develop a strong bond with someone. That's where you develop and you have people that you're mentoring uh, decades later. Why? Because of what you've gone through together. Ecclesiastes 4.9 says two people are better off than one for they can help each other succeed. And the number five is commission. Someone say commission. 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 Matthew 28, 19. Therefore, go. Someone say go. go. He didn't say sit in the chair and stay. He said go. Right? And make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So after you've been equipped, and after you equip your disciples, the people you're mentoring, send out your disciples to go out to preach the gospel, to love people, to meet their needs, and to make disciples of Jesus that make disciples of Jesus. Send out disciples and spread the fire of Jesus Christ. I'm going to end it with this. I just want you to see impact, okay? Our, our senior pastor, Pastor Marco, his mom came to the Lord through a young evangelist girl that was just knocking on the doors and, evangel and evangelizing, basically like, kind of like adopt the block, Pastor Mark, that's funny, kind of like adopt the block. And what she did was invite her to church. His mom, Carmen, get, came to the Lord, okay? Because someone went out, preached, and reached her, right? Now, she, Carmen, Grandma Carmen, she birthed out, she discipled, Two men, Pastor Robert, Pastor Marco. Through her discipling Pastor Marco, Pastor Marco has been able to disciple. I was trying to make a chart, Pastor Marco, but it's just too many people. I, I, like, it's just, there's too many people to put how many you've impacted and discipled. But I was just one of those people. And just by him 
impacting and saying, I'm committed. We know we have a pastor who's committed. I'm committed. I'm going to preach the gospel. I'm going to communicate the word of God. I'm going to be a teacher of the word. I'm going to be coached by his mom, who really was his pastor. I'm going to be part of a community and bond with brothers and sisters as I help them grow in Christ. And then his mom commissioned him to go out and start to do outreach in his neighborhoods. He was sent out, and he was sent out to a place right here, San Bernardino. He moved over here to San Bernardino. Why? Because he was commissioned. The Lord brought him here, and this is what happened. Me, someone that was out here struggling, suicidal, was able to come in contact with him and hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Is that crazy? But I want to leave you with this. It did not and it will not stop with me. It has not stopped with me. I've continued to make disciples over the last 12 years. I've continued to preach the gospel to people, to mentor them, to love them, to help them get delivered, to help them get healed. And all the different people that I've mentored, even just through one of them, hundreds and hundreds have been mentored and discipled. I just want to encourage you today, don't let it stop with you. I know that you've been impacted by this house. I know you've been impacted that God has used this church and used our pastors to impact you, but I just pray that it doesn't stop with you. And I just want to end it with this. I want to show you guys a photo of me and Abriana, who's my beautiful wife. This is for you if you're thinking, well, if I commit to God, what would I get? If I commit to, to being a coat, being disciple, what would I get? If I commit to helping people, what's going to happen for me? That type of stuff right there. <laughs> it's not worse. It's better. Stop thinking like, oh, man, I don't know how my life is going to turn out. Did you see my life in the beginning? Those guys I was with, they, everyone calls each other like, man, those are my boys. It's family. They're my family. I'll help them, and I've helped a bunch of them, but I'm just saying, we think that we are part of something that it's not really true. God is the only one that could provide something for you that lasts, that you get some type of true satisfaction from, and it comes through his Holy Spirit. I couldn't make this happen. I couldn't do anything to earn this. God said, here you are. He gave it to me. You know what's crazy? I, I, when, when God was showing me Abriana, I, I didn't want to date Abriana. Not only because she was the pastor's daughter, but I was like, that's kind of sketchy. Like, I don't know. Like, wait until he meets my family. <laughs> when he sees my dad, he's going to be like, this guy. Like, but I just want you to understand, you know, because I, I think someone's in that place right now. I was trying to get what I thought I deserved. I literally, I literally, guys, this sounds crazy, but I only wanted a girl that had family from the hood. And, and maybe one kid. I was only 19 years old, I have no kids or nothing, but why did I want that? Because I felt like that's what I deserved. I felt like, I felt like this. I felt like when I reveal my dirt, she'll accept me because she, she has dirt too. Actually, now we're just a dirty couple with a dirt past, like we're good now. We're, we, no, God said, I'm gonna give you what you don't deserve. I'm gonna give you what I got for you. I'm gonna give you someone who's pure, someone who is holy, someone who never had a boyfriend before. And now I'm gonna say, here you go, son, because you've been faithful with the little. Here you are. I'm gonna bless you with the wife of your dreams. And it gets better. Hold on, it gets better. Let's see the next slide. Look at that. Xander and Zayden. Then God says, it's not only going to get better, it's going to get way better. And I'm going to give you two more gifts, some prized possessions of mine. I'm going to give them to you. And, and you're going to be able to live with them and stir with them and take care of them. And most of all, you're going to be able to tell them who I am and what I've done in your life. I have now my two sons. I have a family that's healthy. I didn't come from healthy families, and I don't want you to let that be your excuse either. I didn't come from, I came from a lot of bad stuff, I, and 
Those that know my story, I started drug dealing at 12 years old for my older brother. I started doing a lot of bad things. My older brother's in prison. He's been in prison for like 16 years for murder. He was from, there's a lot of bad stuff. I don't even want to get into all of it yet. But I just want you to know your start is not, stop focusing on where you came from. Please, it's not gonna help you. Even if you didn't have a background like me, maybe you didn't have a background like me, but whatever your background is, I don't want you to be looking back anymore. Can you guys give me that commitment today? No more looking back. That's all I'm asking for. I'm not asking you to be this like crazy, like, all right, today you're just gonna go and memorize the whole Bible. I'm just saying, can you just commit to stop looking back? Can I get that commitment? Someone say yes if you're committed. Let's all stand up. If you guys enjoyed what God has given you guys today, give a hand for the Lord today as if he ministered to your hearts. I want to give the opportunity. This is my favorite part right here. I want to give the opportunity. You see my story, okay? If you have not given your life to Jesus, okay, I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ. The Bible teaches that the wages of sin is death, okay? You might feel like you have a life full of hell right now. There's some people that believe, like, man, my, my life is jacked up. It can't get any worse. You know where it's worse? It's in, worse than hell. This is nothing compared to hell. And this is the truth. Every one of us, because of our sins, by default, puts us on a path headed for destruction to eternal punishment. Hell is, a, is, is, a, is not a place where you're going to be partying and having fun like maybe I thought hell would be like before. It's a place absent of God, which means this. The Bible says God is love. There is no love in hell. What do you think you love right now? What do you feel like loves? Where do you get love from? There is none of that in a place like hell. And God chose to display the most beautiful love story ever. He chose to display his love for you by saying, I know you're a sinner. I know you have it all messed up right now. I know you're going through all these things and you're not living for me, but I'm going to send my son Jesus so he could take on the penalty that you deserve all the weight and all your sin that you've ever committed, Jesus came and he said, I'm gonna put myself on this cross. I'm gonna sacrifice myself so that you can have the opportunity to give your life to Jesus and go and live with God for all of eternity. Some of us, our sins have been weighing us down. Some of us are so heartbroken because we see the sins pass into our kids and we see our kids struggling with sins just like us. And what's gonna help them? Maybe you're thinking it's the hope of the world, it's Jesus Christ. He's the only one that could give them life. He's the only one that could provide you true, lasting hope. And I'm gonna ask you guys right now, if you wanna surrender your life to Jesus, if you wanna be forgiven of your sins, Maybe you, maybe you believe in God and you're saying, man, I just need to recommit my life to God. I strayed away. Today's your day to commit. Amen. Let's do this. On the count of three, I want you to just raise your hand if you want to commit your life to Jesus for the very first time or maybe you're recommitting. One, two, three. Lift up your hands all over this place. Amen, 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 amen. Yeah, come on. If you want to commit, I'm telling you, it only gets better. It only gets better with Jesus. Come on. If you raise your hand, I want you to come down to the front. Let's come down to the front if you raise your hand. Amen. Look, people are getting saved right now. People are giving their life to Jesus online. If you're giving your life to Jesus, I'm so proud of you. Everyone watching online, everyone at The Way LA. If you're giving your life to Jesus, this is your starting point. This is not the finish line. This is the starting point. Okay? Come on. They're still coming down. Let's go. Thank you, Lord. Come on. We're surrendering it all to God. He knows how to handle your situation. Come on. There's nothing too big for him. 
It might be too big for you. It might be overwhelming for you. But I'm telling you, he will transform you. He will change you into a new person. He can do it. And he will do it. I want you guys to pray with me. And after, I, after we pray, we're going we're gonna to connect some more people into some leadership. If you're giving your life to Jesus right now, I want you to just pray with me. Let's all bow our heads and close our eyes. If you're giving your life to Jesus, right now what I want you to do is say this prayer with me. We're going to have a QR code up right now, if we could get that QR code up. And this is going to be for every one of you that are getting saved. This is going to be for every one of you that wants to be part of Holy Warriors 4. You're saying, I want to be a leader. I want to be a disciple. Just repeat after me. Say, Jesus, right now, I surrender my life. Right now, I choose to give you everything that I am. Forgive me of my sins. I put my faith in Jesus Christ. I believe that God loved me so much that he sent Jesus to die for my sins. And on the third day, he resurrected from the dead. From this moment forward, I am a disciple of Jesus who makes disciples of Jesus. Amen. Amen.